Hi everyone, welcome to the More In You podcast with Olu Olabode. This is episode 56 and I'm so excited. You know I'm always excited, but I have an awesome guest in the house and I'm going to be introducing her. I have Kimisha King in the house all the way from Barbados. Let's give it up for her. Thanks Kimisha, thanks for being here. Yes, definitely. Hi, everyone. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. I'm excited to be here with you, Ulu, and with your viewers as well. Thank you so much for being here. So I'm going to ask you, I have some, some quick questions before we jump into our conversation. So today we're talking about no limitations allowed. You know, we're talking we're talking to women. And mm-hmm. because this podcast is, it, you know, it kind of talks about the more we have within us. But sometimes, just like you and I know, there are always a lot of limitations that always seek to stop us. That's right. And so we're going to be going into that in a little bit. But before we do that, I'm going to read your bio and then I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to informally introduce yourself. So <laughs> okay. I'm going to read your, it's a short bio. I'm just, I just got, I'm going to read the short, the short version. Yes. So Prophetess Kimisha King is an author, publisher, podcaster, an international speaker, content creator, a certified master trainer, a certified international life purpose coach and an entrepreneur. Kimisha is the founder and CEO of Queen's Mindset. I love that. Through her platform, women get empowering information on relationships, financial empowerment, business, personal development, emotional stability, and most importantly, the mindset of a queen. Woo! That is powerful. So just even when I just think of that, you know, that phrase, the queen's mindset, it's so yes. powerful by itself. So we're, we're, I'm, I'm excited to get into that. Oh but I want to say beyond that bio, I know that's just a short bio, but beyond that bio, who is Kimisha? Mm, I love this question. Okay, so Kimisha is a God-fearing woman. She is a woman that has strong beliefs in the Lord, and she is a very passionate individual, someone who, when she puts her mind to something, she gets it done. I say stubbornness is her resilience (laughs) because she does not allow a no for an answer. You know, if you say it's not possible, she finds a way to make it possible. Mm -hmm. Always finding a way to make it happen and always chasing after every dream and every goal Mm -hmm. and every plan that God lays upon her heart. She really pursues and has a passion for women, loving to see women thriving, seeing them being able to accelerate and be able to achieve and conquer and overcome those obstacles that they may be faced with. You know, one of the things that really gets me really passionate is when I see women just wasting time. I'm like, no, we don't get to waste time, you know. You know, you don't get to waste time. This Mm -hmm. is our moment. This is our time. So I am the midwife. I'm going to step in and I'm going to help you birth that dream and birth that thing that God has planted in you. Woohoo! Isn't it awesome? We're here to birth. Yes. (laughs) So excited. So So I'm going to ask you another interesting question. So can you share two fun facts about you that we don't know? Hmm. Huh, one from I don't know if this is much of a fun, but one fun fact that I would say a lot of people may not know is that I love cheese. <laughs> I <laughs> eat cheese on everything. Oh wow. You're Anything. like my son. My last oh, one loves wow. cheese. Oh my god. That's my friend. That's my friend immediately. <laughs> I'll eat cheese with anything, with biscuits, with bread. You just give me it. I love it. So that's one of uh, fun fact about me. Uh, another fun fact about me is that I actually do um poetry. Um, I usually mm. write, I write poetry. Um, it's actually, some of it came out in one of my first books too as well. So in my quiet time, I depend, but I'm an emotional writer. So mm. I only write my poetry when I'm going through my emotions. Mm. And that's when I would write my poetry. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. That would be that would be awesome to actually yeah, read it in a book. That would be really interesting. Yeah. Oh, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. So you are the CEO of Queen's Mindset. Yes. Mm. What started you off on this journey? Oh. <laughs> I, honestly, when I first thought about it, I when I really look back at it, because I really want to make sure I give justice to this question. You know, when I think about it, so where did this really come from? But it was always a part of me. I never recognized that I was always the friend who empowered her friends. Always the friend who was there to counsel her friends. Wow. Always the friend who was there to give guidance and to push them and say, you can do it. You can do it. Even if I couldn't see how it could be possible, I would even say it because I knew that. But there was a time when I attended a convention, and this was back in 2017. 
And after hearing the speaker, I mean, it ignited a fire within me. I just mm. was like, you know what? I have to start this. And the name came so automatically. Oh, I didn't wow. have to think about it. I mean, Holy Spirit just gave me coins myself. And I said, that's it. I'm running with it. I got it up and running on Instagram and I started posting um, motivational videos and stuff. And But then something happened. Ulo. I shared it with someone else to so collaborate with me. Yeah. And I told her about my vision and everything. I was super excited. And she totally downplayed my dream and it crushed oh, me. Are you it serious? Crushed, it crushed me. Mm. I shut down everything for one year. And mm. then in 2019 is when God reminded me to get back up and start again because I gave you this. And I am going to be with you, so get up and do it again. So I started again back in 2019, and from then we've been running ever since. And God has just been amazing. I mean, to see the the, the number of people who have been blessed, you know, just by pushing them into their purpose and yeah. helping them to just, you know, change, transform the way how they think mm -hmm. and how they see things, so that if they change their mindset, they can literally change their lives. Wow! 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 Thank you for sharing that with us. And with, yeah. with what you said about you shared it with somebody and they took it on and made it yeah. their own. You know, there's I love something that John Maxwell often, that he often says. He often says, when God gives you a thing, like when he gives you um, a word or a phrase or a movement, mm -hmm. or he gives you, he said, you can never exhaust the depth of it. And why did I share that? It means that person could have thought, oh, I'm taking it like I have it. She shared it with me. But guess what? They don't have the blueprints. For that initiative so you can't really run with what you don't have the depth for yeah. so the person that has the depth because you you know what you got from god you yes. have the blueprint and so yeah. somebody might say i'm gonna run with it but guess what they can only run with as much and then they run out of steam that's right so thank you that's for right. coming back up because imagine all those lives that you've been able to impact yes since, since you came back up yeah those lives and where would they be today if okay. you had said no i'm just gonna stay down i'm not gonna go ahead with so thank you for that's doing true. that wow, yes. wow wow and and that's gonna actually lead me to another question i want i want you to mm -hmm. just share with us because we talk about yeah. having, last week i was actually sharing the episode i shared last week talked about the power of your belief ah, so okay. i when i got your email i started laughing when i saw your you know the phrase at the bottom of your email i'm like yes wow talking <laughs> of belief, and i was like wow this yes is so, this is not even a coincidence i'm like this is so interesting wow and i want us to just kind of talk to you know we're talking to women i want to just kind of talk about what does it mean to have a queen's mindset because often we have it within us god has equipped us god has loaded us up but often we don't even know how yes. to stand tall with the queen's mindset. What, what does what is it all about so pretty much when we talk about when i talk about queen's mindset you're not just adopting a queen's mindset just because you're in 2022 because most people think that okay this is just a phase because you know when 2020 came everybody wanted to get their act together everybody yeah. wanted to get everything you know in place mm -hmm. but when we talk about adopting a queen's mindset it's a lifestyle it's the way how you mm -hmm. view yourself how you see yourself because as women and we have worth and most times we don't play our worth and our value mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we get caught up in the rhythm of everything else. You know, we try to take on the role of everything else that was never given to us. And then we lost ourselves in the process. So we talk about understanding that you are royal because Christ paid a price for us. He said, we are a royal priesthood, mm -hmm. a chosen generation. He chose us. Yeah. And then he tells us that he has a plan for us. So Hallelujah. why are we behaving like there's no blueprint? There's already a blueprint. You know, you just need to follow the steps. And then once you see yourself as royalty, you begin to act like royalty. Okay, and yeah. you understand, hey, you know what? Women are the backbone of society. We are the ones who come and help to build a nation and keep it together. So why are we acting like, you know, we can just stay in the corner and we do? And that's not mm -hmm. to take away anything from men because they have their role. And we mm -hmm. want them to play their role. Trust mm -hmm. me, we do. Mm -hmm. But we still want to be able to own who we are. And once you can help to build that mindset, your mind is so powerful. Yeah. Because if you tell your mind that it's not so, it's not so, the mind doesn't have a mind of its own. Your subconscious yeah. is going to do whatever you say. Yeah. So Definitely. once you can be in control of your mind and how you feel yourself and your the different perspectives that we have, because society is giving us one thing. Environments are giving us another thing. Yeah. And then we are confused. So we're tossed to and fro. Yeah. So it's about having your mind fixed. And what helps you to do that? Fixing your mind upon Christ. 
because yeah. he's, he's the answer for everything mm -hmm. and he gives us so as a queen you know this is how i behave i behave like royalty you don't see royalty behave like peasants that royalty does not behave like peasants there's a standard so it pulls, mm. pushes that woman to a level a standard that she has to come up to you have to arise so if you're going to take on the queen's mindset you're going to have to arise you're going to have to mm. decide that there's some things yeah that are just not going to work for me and it pushes you to understand that hey limits is a thing of the past I don't accept limits because queens don't accept limits. You don't see the Ooh, royal family. Can you say that again, please? We don't accept limits we because don't. queens don't accept limits. Powerful. We don't. We mm. don't. You don't see the royal family limiting themselves. You know, yeah. if they have to do something, they get it done. They do whatever, and that's the same thing. The Bible tells us, "So as it is in heaven, so shall it be on the earth." Yeah, yeah. So yeah. everything that we are seeing here it already exists already. Yeah. So we are the ones who have the power then. So why are we acting like we don't? So mm. that's that's the whole uh, the whole thing behind the queen's mindset, making sure that people understand you don't have to be lost with the status quo. You mm. you are separated. You stand apart, and standing apart, being unique, being authentic is yep. not a bad thing. Being different is a great thing because it mm. means that you get to stand out. It means that people will see you first mm. because if everybody is blending, you don't see the difference. <laughs> but if you see something that is odd automatically yeah. you're going to pull out the odd mm -hmm. thing and that's what it means to be a queen with that queen mindset you want to be odd it's good mm -hmm. to be odd wow yes you are so right you you just you just made me remember I'm, i just finished writing a book which mm -hmm. i'm launching so it's called masterpiece not mass produced and it talks ah, about us that. unleashing our flavor to our world and you just hit the nail on the head when you said it's okay because a lot of time we feel it we feel we have to be like everybody else yes. it's okay to be authentic it's okay to be unique it's okay to be different for me as a person it, for the longest time i found it so hard you know i found it so hard to you know to be authentic i found i i thought i had to be like everybody else mm. and i remember for the longest time also it was worse because i was a pastor's wife and people okay. often would put me in this box like you have to be this way yes. and i remember you have to be no you can't do that my wives don't do that and yes. i felt choked but i yes. couldn't do anything i felt like i had to fit in and mm. i remember it was the day god said to me when are you gonna start you know when are you gonna start living out my dreams and purposes for your life why did i walk to tell you what and what you can't do and i felt like whoa where is that coming from that was the day i realized that i had a uniqueness and and it was counting on me to bring it to the table yes and so i love what you just shared every one of us comes up as a queen with our flavors yes every single one of us that authenticity i i think for, for a lot of women especially now with social media even makes it harder yeah because people are looking at what somebody else is doing a b c d is that that's what right you need to do uh -huh. and sometimes because you don't even know you're a queen oh come then, on talk about it <laughs> then you just behave it's almost like it's almost like that story of that chicken i yeah. remember that there's a story about a chicken and i think an eagle that the chick the, the eagle grew up with the chickens yeah i always thought it was a chicken but one day he saw an eagle soaring and he looked and he's like oh that that looks like me but mm. it's on the ground. And, yes. he's looking and he's thinking because he was born to soar but he didn't even know he no. thought it was meant to be with you and that was the last day he was with the chickens so yes. i love the way you talk about you, you know you talk about having a queen's mindset mm -hmm. and i want us to just go deeper into what are those things that limit us from having you know from just taking on you said something so powerful you said we don't accept limits like we don't mm -hmm. we we don't accept limits it's not acceptable uh -uh. we are royal the bible says we are royalty That's so we right. must arise as royalty but let's yes. look into some, what are some of the things that seek to just limit us like i said for me it was people's opinion for me oh. friend. Let, let's kind of go into that a little oh bit. yeah listen you hit the nail right on it you hit the hammer and the nail there because what people think about us people's opinions it keeps us in a box you know it keeps us in a place where it's in prison we're in prison because we're trying to two step around everything that is happening and what persons are saying because we're trying to please everyone except for ourselves. But here's the thing, the only person who's suffering is us. Yeah. But we don't recognize it because we want so much to, you know, to help them to help them. And then the other thing that also limits us is when we, we focus so much on being perfect. 
you know mm. we want it all together we want it all to make yeah. sense we want and you can't mm. control everything yeah. that's the beauty that's the beauty of that having that type of mindset to have room to allow things to flow to have room for flexibility so that anything comes up you can go to the next level and you grow in that but you don't have to control everything every single time you're able to grow because mm. guess what you're going to learn new things along the way and by learning those new things, we can begin to put those things into practice. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that also helps that um, that really limits us, and I love it because it says limiting belief. What's the limit? The belief. Mm. The lack of belief is what we're missing, because we most times we say, "Okay, I believe I can do that," but yeah. then we go and we, we we are met with obstacles, and all of a sudden we're unsure. So where has the belief gone? Because it's one thing to say, but then the actions must be able yeah. to produce it. So simple mm -hmm. things like I hear women will say, I have goals or I have dreams. You know, they will say, yes, I want to buy my own home or I want to buy my car or something like that. But what are you doing? Are you actively seeking mm. after those things? Because if you're just seeing it, did you write it down? Do you have yeah. a plan? What's your plan? You know, what are you putting in place? What steps are you putting in place? Are you affirming it? Are you speaking it over your life every day? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Mm. So what are you doing? Those are the things that help to build your belief. You want to create the environment so that, okay, I want to have a brand new home. What type of home do you want? How many rooms do you want? What color mm. do you want it to be? Let's make it detailed. Let's appease, let's appease to the feeling, the emotion that you get. How would you feel when you get those keys in your hand? you're going to be happy you're going to be you're going to be excited yeah. you know you're going to be over the moon so mm -hmm. now you know the feeling let's work backwards let's yeah. work on mm. the steps that you need to take let's have the pictures of that home in your house already yep the one that you're in so that every morning when you get up you see the picture mm. in your bedroom you see the picture in your living room you see yes, the picture please. in your laundry room yes, in the kitchen please. in the bathroom it's a reminder every time you look up mm -hmm. you see it and it tells you this has to happen yeah you're speaking it you're seeing it and it will come that is it make, make the yeah. notes and stuff and be active and that's mm. what i think cripples us from being able to really pursue that's what keeps us limited with our beliefs because we don't go all the way we go part mm. of the way we go to the place where it's comfortable and mm. when it becomes uncomfortable we stop mm. and, and we have to become <laughs> uncomfortable. I'll be there. i get it <laughs> yes we have to become uncomfortable with being comfortable, comfortable. so that we can, because what's going to happen is that you're going to have to unlearn the things that you were taught. It's a hard process because habits are easy to be created yeah. and they're very hard to be broken. Yeah. So now you have to be able to, okay, let's go back. These are the steps that I used to do before. I can't do that. What are you saying? What type of conversations are you having? Who are you speaking with? Yeah. You know, how's your environment? Who are you connecting with? Because you can't say that you believe, but then you're talking with people who don't have the level of mindset that you have. Don't have conversation with people who tell you it's not possible. You and then they talk throw to, you back. Yeah. Correct. You want to talk to those persons who have been there, who've done that. Okay. You said you want to have the house. Have you gone mm. and checked it out? Have you gone and do some site visits? You don't have to have mm. the money. You know, no. you just get up and go. Feed go your mind. <laughs> yes. Go test drive the vehicle that yeah. you want. Yes, please. Go fill the engine, you know. Mm -hmm. Go prepare for it. You said yeah. you want to, you have to mm. make preparation because your preparation is what goes, it, it goes, what preparation does is that it literally signs a contract with your belief. Because once you prepare, opportunities begin to open because it sees that you're serious. What you're doing mm. is that you're creating that, uh, that moment that opportunity for manifestation to occur. But if you just sit on the sideline and you just say, and you do nothing, then nothing is going to manifest because it's, you're not serious. You want to know that you're serious. That's the way the Bible tells us, faith without words is dead. dead. Yep. So there's activity that needs to take place. Yeah. And that's what limits our belief, the level of activity that takes on. Because if you believe something, you act like it. And regardless of what is happening around you, you act mm -hmm. like it because you believe that it's happening. You see that it's coming. And I love this part of the, um, of the Bible, the story of Jesus. You know, when he mm -hmm. told his disciples that, you know, he was going to be gone and he'll be back in three days. They didn't believe it. Nope. They, they were trying to with figure it. it out with their little mind. Yeah, they, they were like, this is impossible. They didn't mm -hmm. believe it. But guess what? He knew it was going to come. And mm -hmm. he actively did everything in his power. Mm -hmm. Everything he had to do up until the end. And then he returned. Because he believed it. He knew that was yeah, coming. And I'm, 
Yeah, and that's the type of faith, that's the type of belief that mm. we want. That unwavering belief that no matter if a storm comes, no matter what happens, mm. it's mm. going to happen because our belief is what pushes the hands of God to respond. Oh, I love that. It it's pushes the hands belief of that pushes the hands of God to, to respond. respond. Yeah, wow. your level of belief. So if you don't believe enough, you know, it's not, it's not going to respond. And also you need more belief based on the level what you're going after. So if you just say, mm. let's say, for example, I'm believing God to change my wardrobe. Okay, that's, I mean, it's possible, of course, they can have that belief. But no, I'm believing God for a million dollars because my child, you know, needs this medical procedure. No, that's a higher belief. Yeah. So you can't go to step. Like, mm -mm. I believe that you have to really go all the way up there. You got to yeah. start making the move. You got to go aggressive at what you want. So mm -hmm. there are different levels to your beliefs. And that's why we find that most persons limit because we use a belief as in believing God for groceries, but believing God for a million dollars. <laughs> it's a then a level. Mm -mm. It's not it's not mm -mm. gonna work. You have to go a step ship. higher. Yes. You're gonna have it. to stand on the word. Oh, you're gonna that's have it. to stay there till you have to be able to yes. see it to know it is gonna it is in your that's hands already. It. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. it. You that's have it. to have the ability to visualize yeah. it. Yeah. And that's what happens. That's why, you know, that's what he talks about. The people thought of vision when they were par they were perished because you have to be able to visualize it. And then he tells us, write the vision, vision. and make yeah, it plain. plain. So he gives us the steps already. So yeah. that's why I'm like, okay, when we talk about it, we are the ones who do it ourselves because we have the game plan right there in the Bible. All we mm. need to do is read and follow the steps. And it comes to pass every single time. It does. It does. Mm. Mm -hmm. The way you said it comes to pass every single time because it's almost like, it's something you can, it's a system you can repeat over yes. and over if you will just follow the steps. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember a couple of years ago, I really wanted to be a, a John Maxwell coach and I didn't have the resources. Mm -hmm. The time wasn't even appropriate for me. Like it wasn't, I wanted it, but at the time, could I actually step into it? No. Mm. But you know how you just know that there's a, you just don't know why you want it, but you know that God is kind of drawing your attention to it. Yes. I remember, I remember, I, I put for about eight years, I, I would put it on my vision board and I would speak over it. And I got a picture of John Maxwell there speaking and I would dream about it. And I could almost see it like in every wow. year. Every then I would just declare, I would just say, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do this, but I, I just believe you're going to do it. In uh -huh. the midst of the pandemic, I think I started doing that in 2012. In the midst of the pandemic in 2020, oh. it me, yes, it's time. And that year we became and john maxwell coaches wow and it became real but i had but i remember when it happened i felt like i had been there before yeah. i was there because for so many years i had visualized i had seen myself standing there and i remember i was standing in front of the mirror and i would just mm, think come you on this is happening i don't know how but i don't it, just, it felt like crazy faith but mm -hmm. I just it was something i'm like okay lord i just see myself here. i don't know how you're gonna do it and i yes. know my body i was like god is this how you work but when I now look back, I was like, yes, because I had taken it. And so I, and I kind of said that's what you're talking about today. Yes, the yes, queen yes. has to know who she is. That's oh, right. That's important. To, has to know who she is. Mm -hmm. And I want I want us to go back to a little bit of it because I find last week I was sharing about when I talk, when I spoke about the power of your belief, I was yeah. speaking about how a lot of time God has blessed us, He's equipped us, but then because we just can't and i think this was what it was for me for so many years as well we mm. just could not see how he was going to deliver it we just like for me i remember for like a year or so god had to make me go to ephesians 3 20 sit on that verse because in the in the physical because i had been they had told me for so many years oh you can't do this you can't do that i just mm -hmm. couldn't see it and i remember every time i would look and say god is able to do exceedingly abundantly how is he going to do it yeah 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 so yeah. how do we like how do we I know you've spoken about us, you know, going into the world, but are there also any other practical things that we can do mm -hmm. as women that can help us, whereby we're still having those things that are still holding us bound, whereby we, we really want to step into what he has for us. Uh -huh. you find yourself as, 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 a, as a human, you're, you're like, I, I want to do it, but it just seems like I just can't see myself getting there. I don't know if what I'm saying kind of yeah. makes sense, but... It does, it makes a lot of sense because it happens a lot. You question it because it's not logical. But that's yes. why he reminds yeah. us that, you know, our, my thoughts is not your thoughts. My ways mm. are not your ways. 
But what I find that helps me with that when I want to see, because you, as as a human being, it's, it's natural for you to, I want to know, because you want to mm. make sure this is going to happen for real. Like you want to mm. see it work. But what really works is when you can go and watch. I watch videos from people who would have gone through what mm. I would have gone through and hear their testimonies of how they mm. overcame. Mm. And that helps to really build my faith because I'm reminded that, you know, if God did it for her, he's going to do it for me. Yeah. It might not, it will not happen the same exact way that it happened for her, but it's given me enough, you know, enough courage, enough confidence yeah. Yeah. to stay in it, to stay in it a little bit longer because God, listen, there's sometimes where we're so close. We are like five seconds away from our point. Yeah, we don't even and, know it. And we don't know. And we can <laughs> give up. And at that last mm. second is when he responds. But if we step away too soon, we lose it. And then we got to go right back around the whole circle again to wait to get back to get what is already ours and that's what most of the times that happens because there's an enemy within and that enemy mm -hmm. within is ourselves yeah. that enemy is in this ourselves you see we we do a lot of self-talk we talk to ourselves mm -hmm. a lot like mm -hmm. we find that we're some type of philosopher or something like that but we need to quit that because talking to ourselves does not help but allowing the holy spirit to speak mm -hmm. helps yeah. because that's the voice we want to hear because yeah. we can talk ourselves out of it and we make it seem so like and we have a really good a really good response for it you know we can tell you exactly why it's not possible why it can't work because we are not willing to stretch have you ever yeah. seen a, a rubber band when you use a rubber band and you stretch your rubber band it never <laughs> that's goes my back. word for the year so you're talking to me <laughs> it never goes back the same but guess what it's still able to endure what it does yes. it's able to wrap more and that's what that's what our faith does with us. That's what our belief allows us to be able to go. Because if we are continuously believing God to do various things in our lives, mm -hmm. we must be at a place where we're expanded. Our faith yeah. is expanded. And it can be painful. It can be uncomfortable. Yes. Mm. But we know that because we did it before, we're going to be able to wrap this again. Mm -hmm. Because we've been through that. So when we find that we come to that obstacles, because the enemy is going to try, he's going to give us as much because we really want to know if you're in this or you're going to, because his, his task is to steal, kill and destroy. He wants to set us up and block us and delay and all that stuff. He has all these special effects. But the good thing is that we know his game plan. We know that we know what's the main purpose, steal, kill and destroy. Mm -hmm. He's going to steal our dreams. He's going to try mm -hmm. to destroy us. He's going to try to do all those things. So when we start mm -hmm. to see these signs coming in, to block us from achieving the thing that we're believing for, we're able to identify and say, this is the enemy. So this mm. is not God. So when he mm. says it's not possible, you know, God is telling you it is possible. You know, yeah. when he's saying to give up, God is saying, don't quit. You mm. can do it. So keep mm. pressing on, keep going. So then you have conversations with individuals who've gone there before you. Let them inspire you. Outside of watching the videos, talk to them, be in an environment, be in a group of women who have overcame major mm -hmm. obstacles so mm -hmm. that when you hear their stories it builds you up you want to feed your faith yeah. and when they tell you these that. things yeah when they tell you this they say like, start reading books that mm -hmm. are talking about faith yeah. and talking about expanding your belief you want to do that because that encourages you and that gives you the drive to stay in it a little bit longer because all you want to do every day you got to make up your mind mm -hmm. i'm gonna do this again it's like I heard a thing where they say that every day you have to decide to be married because marriage isn't easy, right? It's, but they say every it's day a lot of to, work. <laughs> you have to decide to be married. So every day on your faith journey, you have to decide to keep the faith. You have to decide that today I'm going to believe. Yeah. So you have to revisit why am I believing and always go back. Um, and one of the other things that I also do too is that I take those few moments and I just visualize myself like you did in the mirror. I yeah. visualize and see myself mm -hmm. getting that thing mm -hmm. that I want. How mm -hmm. is that going to make me feel? And you see those emotions? Yes. Where emotions They're so real. Mm. It pushes you. It drives mm. you to stay mm. and keep going and keep pressing mm. on. So there are moments when you're going to just feel like, I'm just going to give up. Don't mm. do it. Don't do it. Just It's okay to take a break. You can pause and you can regroup. And you mm -hmm. can return, but never ever give up because that moment that you decide that you're giving up, you're handing over the thing that you're believing to someone else. Ooh, women, did you hear that? The moment you decide to give up, mm, you're handing it over to someone else. I know what I always say. The sad part of that is that you would never know what you could have become in that process. No. You would never know what God had for you on the other side. 
yeah. when we give up we never find out no but if we would only keep going if we yes. only keep pushing we would get to the end and see what god has in store for us mm-hmm. yes. wow, 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 yes. wow 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 thank you so no limitations allowed uh-uh. none at all yeah. is there any we can allow <laughs> no <laughs> none no, not at all. Wow, 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 wow. The, thank you so much. The last question I'm going to ask you is, which we, we've spoken about, we want to just, we want to throw away every limiting belief out of the window. And I'm going to ask you, just before we go into what offers you have and everything, I want to just say a word of prayer, even over women that are struggling right now. I just kind of sense that are struggling with even stepping into that which God has for them. Yeah. Women that feel like I don't have, I'm not enough, I don't feel qualified. You know, they look at it in the word of God, but they just don't see it being real in their life. Mm. They just, they just, they see it on the pages of the word of God, but they just don't see themselves in yes. that picture. Yeah. I want us to just say a word of prayer over this set yeah. of women that, that are struggling with seeing themselves the way God sees them. Just, mm-hmm. just go ahead. Father God, even now, we bring every woman to you right now, Father God. Every woman under the sound of my voice that will listen to this podcast, Father God, and that would also view it, Father God. Father God, we cancel every thought that is lingering in their mind right now. Every mind babbling voice, Father God, that is speaking words that you have not spoken, Father God. We silence every word curse right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. And we command visibility for them, Father God. We command, Father God, a mindset of a queen, Father God, to come forth, Father God. We ask for a transformation to happen in the mind, Father God. We pray right now, Father God, that you would do surgery on their minds, Father God, to open up their minds, Father God, to that world that you have already created for them father god remind them of your word father god where you said father god that there's nothing impossible there's nothing impossible for you to do father god that with god all things are possible if they only believe if they only trust in you father god and lean not onto their own understanding father god even now father god for every woman who is struggling father god because she has not handed over the fight over to you god we ask father god for a release father god we ask father god that you would take that burden off of their back Father God, where they believe that they need to take on the burden of pushing it through, of seeing it to the end, and allow you to move, Father God. Allow you to direct their path, Father God. Allow you to give guidance to them, Father God. I pray, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, for everything that is blocking them in their atmosphere, Father God. Everything that is there, Father God, that is causing them, Father God, to just not see their true potential, Father God. Even now, Father God, we ask for it to be broken in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Every spirit of depression and oppression Father God, that is blinking and blocking them, Father God, from being able to overcome, Father God. We break the back even now in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. We come against every warfare that is happening in the mind, Father God. Every battlefield that is taking place there in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, to try to make them feel that they're not worthy, that they do not deserve it, Father God, because we know, Father God, that they deserve even more because they are royalty. They've been bought with a price. They're a royal priesthood, Father God. And because you sent your son to die for them father god it means father god that they are so they're immense value to you they mean so much for you to make such a sacrifice like this i pray god that you will remind them that they are loved they are chosen and they are wanted and they are needed and that their gifting is needed in this earth father god their voice are needed in this earth father god i pray god for every woman who is listening now that they will begin to write their vision down they will no longer limit themselves father god because money is not an issue for you yes. Yes, yes, upon the hill belongs mm-hmm. to you father god you are able father god you said there's a warehouse that is stored up for us mm-hmm. father god and all we have to do is ask the bible tells us that you have not because you ask not so father god on the behalf of every woman i stand in the gap today father god asking father god for every dream father god every idea father god every vision father god every plan father god everything that they have ever desired father god i ask on their behalf father god that they will see it through they will see the evidence it will manifest father god they will make the steps father god we remove every form of limitation that is blocking them father god 
better it be a resource, Father God, or it be assistance, Father God, that they will trust that you will send the assistance that is needed. Every destiny helper that is needed for them will now be assigned in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Mm-hmm. Every helper, Father God, that is needed for them will now be assigned in the mighty name of Jesus. Every resource that is needed, Father God, will appear now in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. I pray, God, that they will take this. This will take their faith to the next level, Father God, by reaching out and holding on to your word, Father God. They will apply your word that when the enemy comes in in the, in the stillness of the night, Father God, to steal their joy, that they will remind the, the enemy that it is written, that you have already spoken. They will speak the word of the Lord over their lives, Father God, over their dreams, over their goals, Father God, over everything that they need and everything that they're believing for, Father God, and they will see it come to pass, Father God. I pray, Father God, that women, Father God, will reach out to Olu, Father God, and they will testify that because I've heard this, because I have gained something from this, I have written down my goals, I begin to set things in place, and I'm walking, I'm walking in preparation to receive, and they will testify that I have received that thing that I have been believing God for, because I have petitioned God for it, and I have stand, I've stand on the promises of God, because you tell us, God, that your promises are yes and amen, they are yes, sure, yes. you are not an unstable God, you are not schizophrenic, God, when you said it is so, it is so, so yes. Father God, even now we believe for them, we stand in the gap to touch yes, and agree, because yes, you are a covenant keeping God, Hallelujah. just like you told Abraham and Sarah that they were going to have a son, it looks yeah. impossible, it mm-hmm. looked like it was not going to happen yes. because of old age and because of barrenness, mm-hmm. Father God, but mm-hmm. because you said it, it's so, it became yes, so, Lord. Father God, and yes. just like Hannah, when she thought that she was not able to give, mm-hmm. because she came and she was persistent, God, she mm-hmm. received God, you did it for Rebecca, you did it for Ruth, you did it for them in the Bible, Father God, mm-hmm. you used these mighty women, you did it for Esther, mm-hmm. when she's standing in the gap for her whole generation, God, you did it for her, Father God, you will do it for them in the mighty name of mm-hmm. Jesus, Father God. I pray, God, that they will receive today just like yes, the woman at the at the, yes, at the, at the well. They will receive mm-hmm. today, Father God. They will receive everyone under my voice today. They will receive everything that they came here looking for, Father God. You will provide the clarity, the guidance, and the direction for them, that they will all have everything that they need to be successful, and they will be able to earn, and they'll be able to go out and bring more women to receive what you planted yes, in them in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father God, we say thank you now for doing yes, it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Man. amen. Thank you amen. so much. Wow, yeah. that was powerful. I just sense like we need to just have that prayer. Thank you so much amen. for that. You're most welcome. I want to share. I know you have this phenomenal magazine, the new yes. magazine you launched. I want to talk about that, talk about the offers you have, your books, Journey to 30, and then is it Seven Days of Intimacy? That's it. You got it. About <laughs> them. I want you to just share all your offers and how yes. people can actually connect with you as well. Okay, perfect. So my magazine, it came out on March 8th, and we launched it to celebrate Women's International Day. So we pretty much have women from all across the world sharing their stories of various things they would have gone through. We have women in business. We have women who are actually in the medical field. We have women who are in politics, women who work with women as well, who work with persons who would have gone through uh, various things like um, domestic violence and so on. They tell their story of that journey for them. And it's phenomenal because one of the things that I really love is I love to see women encouraging women. Because yeah. most times as women, we tend to get jealous immediately. We pull each we other feel, down. We pull each other down because we feel that if my sister is shining, yeah. somehow my light automatically dim. But mm. if you light several lights in a room, all that happens is that the room becomes brighter. They can they can shine at the same time. Mm. And so that magazine pretty much is, it depicts the fact of all lights shining at the same time to increase the level of brightness so that we can pull all the sisters who are in darkness to the light. Because when they see the light, they're going to come. Because it's so bright, it will blind them and it will cause them to get up and do something to me. Hallelujah. Yeah. So then that, then the next thing is my book, Journey to 30, The Naked Truth, I Am You. That book came out in 2021. And that book is pretty much my life story. Everything that I would have gone through up to the age of 30 years old, coming from a dysfunctional background, Mm. you know, and coming out of poverty as well, seeing my family struggle. And I had to learn that, you know, Kamisha, just because you are Mm. within this dysfunction, it does not mean that it gets to define you. 
Joseph was in dysfunction, but he went from the pit to the prison to the palace. David was a part of dysfunction. We saw what his brothers did with him, but he was able then to serve and become a king. So you can see that their characteristics within the Bible of all these persons who would have gone through this functionality, mm. but that does not define them. And my book really much, pretty much empowers women to really go there and own their truth. Yes, you might have come from a horrible background. There's some challenges that you would have faced. That does not mean that that's not who you are. You, you are even more powerful because yeah. of what you've been through, because now you're supposed to go out to help those persons who are in that situation that you would have overcome. So we don't get to hide in the shadows anymore. So the book really pretty much encourages you. It pushes that individual to own their truth. And then Seven Days of Intimacy, that one came out this year. That came out um, actually on Valentine's Day. Uh, that was a that was a gift of myself. And that pretty much came from God telling me, you know, take yourself on Seven Days of Intimacy. On my journey now, I'm waiting for my Boaz to arrive. And I remember mm-hmm. when I started, mm-hmm, I remember I started telling God, God, you need to send a husband. Like, where is he? Like, you know, because <laughs> you have all these things. I, I tell myself, you know, as women, mm-hmm. you have like a list. And you're yeah. like, oh my God, I'm about to get, I'm about to get to 30. Like the mm-hmm. husband isn't here. So how am I going to have the children? Like, mm-hmm. you know, you have all these things planned. Mm-hmm. And I was telling God, like, God, come on. Like, where is he? And then God said, I don't think you're ready yet. You need to take yourself mm. on seven days of intimacy. Wow. You know, and I'm this argument with God. I, I'm not ready. Like, I got it together. You know, I'm doing this. I'm mm. doing that. But when God said, trust me, let's go on these dates. And when I went on those dates, I recognized so many things about myself, you know, mm. that I wasn't really in a place to be a wife. Because mm. your role as a wife is very important. Yeah. You know, if you are called to be a helpmate, it means you have to be stronger than the person you're mm-hmm. helping. Ooh. <laughs> you can't help someone and not be strong yeah so i wasn't mm. ready i was looking for validation from others i was still struggling with uh, insecurities you know the way how i view my body not accepting my flaws those mm. were not the underlying things that i thought i had overcome but all mm. i did was compartmentalize it mm. i just put it one side and i moved past it and i told people i was healed i wasn't healed from past mm. relationships i didn't forgive myself for a lot of things and god ready he yes but he yes and then you're gonna bring me. that baggage into another relationship exactly. and everything. everything and mm. then you, you go into that you're undercooked you're not ready yeah you're mm-hmm. just not ready so when god took me on that i said wow and i, I had all these you know revelations about myself i was mm. like okay I understand, but I'm glad that you showed me and no one else, you know, and glad that God showed me these things about myself, but I didn't thought that I was going to write a book. I just thought I was going on a journey for myself, mm. but then I got a prophecy and the prophecy was that I was going to do it. And God kept tugging at me to do the journal. I was like, no, journey to 30 just came out. It's only been seven months. Let's give it a chance. So, you know, to get out there, I can't be ready to do another book already. It's not even a year. But God was saying, do it now and do it now. So I wrote that in three weeks, got that out. Wow. And then we started a boot camp off of it. We just finished mm. our first boot camp uh, mm. session with that. And the women, I mean, the reviews are phenomenal. The things that they would have learned about mm. themselves, just hearing how it really mm. impacted them. It mm. really blesses my heart because I know that I am in alignment with what God is yeah. saying. Yeah. Because this was something that people needed to learn. Just like mm. I found value in learning all of these things about myself so they're both uh, you can both get them from amazon amazon to, okay go to amazon and you can purchase both of them on amazon and you can when you purchase to as well be sure to send me your review you can follow us on queen's mindset on instagram you can follow us on youtube as well and facebook same name queen's mindset and then there's my program we have called battered bruise not broken and that is a series where we highlight women who would have overcame adversities. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes when I sit with these women and I hear about these things that they would have, you know, they would have conquered. I'm like, my God, you never know what someone is going you through. You never know. You, never you just know. you just never know. I'm mm-hmm. like, they're so strong. We are so strong. Yeah. We don't even understand. We're so mm-hmm. strong. So it gives me really great joy to be able to help those women. And what I found that has been happening with this series is that when most of those women come to tell their story, some of them aren't completely healed. But by mm-hmm. the end of sharing their story, they get their healing. Mm. because now they're truly pulling it apart and dealing with the things that they would Mm. have never dealt with before and they receive Mm. their healing and then we have women who come on to watch and go like oh my god 
that's where I'm at. Mm-hmm. And I and you yeah. know it really empowers them and encourages them to say, you know, if my sister did it, I can too. Yeah. You know, and they can see how they can overcome. So I'm I'm really, really, really excited about that. Our next season comes out on September seventh. We're, we're in season have, three, I think, right? Yeah, season three, yes. We're in season three now. Um we're gonna have that next season starting on September seventh. So I'm really excited about that. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, you have a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you so, so much. This yes. this young woman is loaded. Thank you. Thank you so you're much. My heart just blesses you. Thank you so much for being such a blessing yes, to us today up. on the more in you. And truly, you just also, also say, you know, you also just confirmed something to me. Mm. We all have so much within us. If we yes. just let God bring it forth. Yes. So much within the you know, just sharing a little about your, your beginnings. We all have so much within us. Yes. If you just let the master mm-hmm. just put a demand on it and bring it forth. Yes. yes. Wow. Thank you so much for being on the more in your podcast. And yes. as you know, people just go connect with her on Instagram. You can connect on Twins Mindset. You will find out everything you need on the on mm-hmm. Facebook as well yes. and on YouTube. I also know you have a YouTube channel, so go yes. on YouTube as well. And then you can watch the videos and just and then if you have any questions, you can also send her a DM. So that's another yes. thing. So she can answer any questions that she, she can't answer right here, but at least she can answer them there. Thank you <laughs> yes. so much, Tunisha, once again. I'm so glad. You are to most you. welcome. I know this won't be the last. This is the first. You're coming <laughs> yes. back. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, you everyone. Are most for welcome. Staying with us. See you again. I'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.